Now, you might have heard this earlier this week. Women aged between 25 and 64 in some parts of London are being offered a do-it-at-home smear test to check for early signs of cervical cancer. It's part of an NHS trial which experts hope will encourage more women to get screened. Now, issues including embarrassment, cultural barriers and worries about COVID can stop women going for smear tests at a clinic or GP surgery. And smear test delays during the pandemic prompted calls for home screening kits for cervical cancer charities. Now, if the results reveal an infection called HBV, women will be invited to see their GP for a standard smear test. Julie Milsdom is a sexual and women's health specialist in Leicester. Julie, welcome to the programme. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, Julie. So why is there such an issue with women getting smear tests at the moment? Um, okay, so it, we're in a national pandemic. Um, obviously, lots of GPs are trying to offer as many services as they can um, throughout Leicester, Leicestershire and Rutland. Um, and obviously, depending on their workload and their teams and obviously their staffing levels, depends on whether they can still offer um, cervical screening appointments to women. Um here, I'm at my private clinic today at Clarewell Clinics in Corn, but at Grooby Road Medical Centre, we're still um, offering women to come and have their smears and positively encouraging them to come and have those taken. Um, but obviously, we know for lots of women, just the thought of a smear just fills them with absolute dread, let alone coming and attending for a smear um, within a national pandemic. <laughs> Julie, you literally mentioned the thought of getting your smear test is is quite daunting. I mean, I've had it, and I'll be honest, it was a bit like, oh, I'm not, I'm not quite sure about this. But then, mm. that's going and getting getting it done with a professional. How are you going to do it yourself? Okay, so the whole idea with cervical screening is that we we are screening healthy women to see if there's any signs of precancerous changes to those cells. So part of cytology, and that's what cytology means, we're looking at the cells to the neck of the womb, the cervix. So obviously that has to be done by um, a professional that is trained, either a nurse, a midwife or a doctor. So yes, um, but obviously the, the new NHS um, trial that's coming out in London is for a self-swab test. So very much like um, you would take for a chlamydia gonorrhea test or check in whether you've got any kind of bacterial infections. So it's very simple to do that home swab test yourself. Um, and lots and lots of women um, have done that and continue to do that for lots of different um, reasons anyway. We know in mm -hmm. STI screening that that can be beneficial for women to take their own swab tests. How would it work, Julie, exactly? So How does that what swab they're test testing work? For, yeah, so what they're testing for, so instead of looking at the cells to see if there's any precancerous changes, we know that this HPV virus can mm -hmm. cause up to 80% of cervical cancers. Now, currently, Leicester City is part of a pilot. So what's happening in our, um, in our area is that we're taking a smear sample. OK, so we're doing that internal examination and have a look at the cervix and take the cells. Um, but then what the lab are doing is they're testing that sample for HPV first. Mm -hmm. So then if that HPV result becomes positive, we know that there's obviously that infection there that can cause and lead to cancers. So what they do then is they, they then look at the cells to see if there's any changes. If there are any changes, then they're referred to specialist services, colposcopy, where we can actually diagnose that, um, that condition. So what we're hoping to do by um, letting women actually just take the self swab themselves. It was, we're trying to isolate that HPV virus before even examining them. And if that encourages then people to do that at home, if it's negative, then brilliant. We just need to see that woman again in three years time. If it's positive, then we know that obviously there's something that we need to look at, we need to maybe treat. So that, that means that then further investigations. So it's a, it's a really positive step towards um, encouraging women to take control of their lives, but also to kind of take away that embarrassment factor. I mean, I saw a young woman um, only this week that was really, really embarrassed to come and have her smear and had delayed her smear test, even though she knew that the benefits outweigh the risks and the embarrassment. 
Um, and I think the only thing I could say to her was really that, you know, the people that undertake cervical smear testing, um, like myself and my colleagues, we do it because we can do it and we want to do it. So we're not embarrassed. So don't be embarrassed for us when we're doing it. You can be embarrassed for yourself, mm. but you don't need to be embarrassed for us. I think one of the challenges you might have with the self-smear situation, Julie, which I'm sure you've already faced, is an understanding of how easy it actually is. Because, mm. I, I mean, I don't know how easy it is, but just thinking about it, I'm thinking, um, well, based on what I have to I had to do when I had to do my smear test, I don't know if I could do that on myself. So how yeah. easy no, you is just, it? Yeah, exactly. So... But the smear test, so because we need to look for the cells to the neck of the womb, the speculum needs to go inside of the vagina and we need to see the neck of the womb to take the samples of those cells. Mm. So with the swab test, so if you can put a tampon in, mm -hmm. you can take your own self-vaginal swab. So all it is is a long cotton wool bud that's inserted into the vagina and then given a, a good old wriggle round in there, a good to make sure we've got a nice, um, sufficient sample for them, the lab to test. So it's very quick. It's very, very easy. And lots of women already around the country have already done that for um, STI screening. So, you know, for a lot of women, it won't be new to them. Obviously, for a lot of other women, it, it may will be, be new. Exactly. Yes. Is it um, painful, Julie? Your genitalia. Yeah. Exactly. That's the other thing we want to know is, is it going to hurt me if I'm putting no, a swab up there? Does it hurt? No, it's not going to hurt. No, definitely not going to hurt. So, obviously, I think um, from what the government have said, they're going to be sending out instructions on how to do this. Um, and that's really, really important. And my, anybody that's kind of inserting anything into the vagina, if you aim towards the kind of the small of your back, that concave bit in the back, that's the angle that the vagina actually... Um, um, intrudes into the body so it is about knowing your body so for some women it's going to be totally alien especially you know, yeah it? and for some women who don't use tampons even it might be alien to them I, I do wonder say. though Julie if um, if it is as easy as you're saying and people are taking up and doing it is this going to change the way in which we test for cervical cancer going forward oh most definitely most definitely. Um, I think it will be um, beneficial to women um, definitely in this country if they can do that HPV testing themselves, a simple kind of, you know, five second swab test that they can then send off themselves. They can do it in the comfort of their own home. They haven't got to organise an appointment to come to the surgery, to organise childcare or get time off work and park and, you know, catch the bus, all those things that, you know, we know that cervical screening very often is, is at the bottom of the pile if you're looking after um, yourself and your family and you're working and you're busy. Um, and those are the kind of things that get put off. But if you can actually do it in your own home, in your own bathroom, by yourself, then that takes away a, a lot of those barriers that women face just actually getting mm -hmm. to the surgery or clinic for a smear test. Now, this is something that started in London with the potential of rolling out in other parts of the country. Mm. If it is successful, do you think it could be rolled out to other parts of the country? Are we going to see this here in Leicester and Leicestershire? Oh, I'm definitely sure. So we're already piloting the in Leicester. So yeah, we mentioned. take um, the, the cervical sample, but they're testing it for HPV first. So we're already part of that pilot to see um, how the pro, you know, what kind of percentages of um, HPV we've got in the population, um, and then obviously the follow-up with that. So it, it's a natural progression. Obviously, for those areas in London, they've got um, poor screening rates and poor uptake rates of cervical um, screening. So that's a, a brilliant way to kind of increase that. And then obviously, if there are, um, it's a, if, sorry, if there is a positive HPV result, then we can invite that lady in for, you know, diagnostic screening and treatment if required. I think fear is one of the reasons, mm. Julie, as to why women may be reluctant to, to take a smear test, whether that's by themselves or whether that's going in. What would you say to somebody who's perhaps, you mentioned an example of a young woman that was putting off mm. her test already. What would you say to someone who's been invited to their GP for a test but is putting it off for very understandable, normal reasons? Mm. Mm. I mean, definitely if... Um, if they know the practitioner that they're going to see, that would be wonderful. Okay, so if they've already met them before, so if they've got these extra anxieties 
um, about it being painful or never having sex, you know, different things like that, that they, that they come and see that practitioner first before they have that smear or they talk to them on the phone. Um, and, and that's what I said to this young woman today. I said, look, we've discussed it. One of her fears was what people were thinking about her body. And I said, well, that's fair enough. You know, we, we see bodies all the time. I've been spending 30 years nearly looking at women's bodies. Um, so this is normal for me. And it, you're as normal down there as you, as you are in your faces. You're different. Everybody's body's different. Um, and I think that kind of put her mind at ease. Um, and also, like I say, knowing that person, making sure that there's, um, when they come to the clinic, that there's privacy for them to get changed um, at any point if they need somebody to stop what they're doing or take their time, that we will listen to their concerns. Um, there's lots of things we can do. A lot of women um, sometimes can get some help with some medication to make them a little bit calmer before they come. Mm -hmm. Another good tip um, is also we can use a local anaesthetic jelly inside the vagina to help ease some pain for some women who find it really, really uncomfortable. So it sounds like there's a lot of things that you can you can do to oh, definitely yeah. So Would I you... think if that if that person can actually speak to somebody who's gonna um, who's going to do the smear test for them, yeah. If we can try and allay their fears before they come, that that has a massive impact on them their their appointment and their experience when they actually come and see us in the clinic or the GP surgery. Julie, you've been brilliant. Thank you so much, Julie. Julie Milson, there, a sexual and women's health specialist in Leicester. <laughs> On the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker, play BBC Radio Leicester. And on your radio. The sound of Leicester is BBC Radio Leicester.